Good evening, it's Dwayne here. I'm at Cala Salada and I'm going to meet Judge Jules for a, a coffee or a beer. And we're going to catch up with him and see what he's up to during these times. Bit strange, I'm walking down steps so if I'm looking down I don't want to fall. Although it would be funny, we're just here at the little beach bar. I'm going to catch up with Jules, see what he's up to, see what he's saying and I hope you enjoy it. Hi guys, I'm here with uh, someone who has been very influential uh, to me in dance music, someone who I listened to, probably the first DJ I've ever listened to, and probably one of the reasons that I've came to Ibiza, uh, Mr. Judge Jules himself. How are How you? Are we? I'm good, I'm good. What's it like being back in Ibiza in the current climate? Um, I've been waiting to come for ages and ages and ages. Ironically, be careful what you wish for, because uh, I was coming over for a couple of days, yeah. got a house here, I needed to see what state it was in really, yeah. because you can't leave anything un untended for too long. Yeah. Uh, got here, planned to go back earlier in the week, and then the UK government finally announced that it was dropping its quarantine, but, yeah. but announced it on a date later than had been widely speculated in the press. So now I'm here longer than I anticipate because I can't go home, I don't want to go home and be caught yeah. in a 14 day quarantine. It's not so, a bad place to be. Well, so it's not, so I'm not, on the one hand I'm like, it's just, it, it, it's doubly surreal to be here when actually you needed to be at home a couple of days earlier. Yeah. Um, where does one start really? I mean we're, we're in the first week of July recording yeah. this and Same. there are yeah, you can see. some, I mean I've been out, I've been to a few restaurants, I've been to some beaches, um, there are people but they're just are no British people yeah. and of course uh, the British represent something like between 20 and 30 percent of the entire tourist market here in Ibiza. Yeah. Um, compared to Spain as a whole, it, um, you know, Brit the British are the biggest tourist group in Spain. But when it comes to Ibiza, the percentage of the market is even greater yeah. than it is as f for Spain as a whole. So it's um, it's kind of strange and obviously very damaging to the economy because you can't simply su su supplant yeah. uh, a missing market with some a a another nationality. For sure. And how has it like affected your career? Is like you obviously had a lot of plans to be playing here at the minute. But. Yeah, I mean, I, as with all DJs, I had a full summer lined up: festivals, overseas trips, yeah. UK gigs, all of which are on ice until this whole thing gets resolved. Um, and I've got, I've got some things still pent. It's it's almost like things continue to be penciled in the diary until the situation yeah. resolves itself. And what I've always liked about you is that you've always like. You've always stood by San Antonio, and in a strange way, San Antonio, out of all the places in Ibiza at the minute, seems to be, I wouldn't say thriving, but it's definitely benefiting from, you know, there seems to be a lot more happening in San Antonio for the other towns. Uh, how do you feel? Like well, I don't know, I haven't really, uh, my house, the, the closest town to my house here is San Antonio, so I haven't, I've yeah. been to Ibiza Town Brief, we've got, I need to kind of go about a bit more and see what it's really like. I mean, I, I, I consider myself a bit of a, a fake expert here because yeah. I know that the lockdown in Spain has been so much more severe than it was yeah, in the it UK. Was Interestingly, we the, the expression that gets bandied about uh, in the UK is policing by consent, which yeah. means that when the public no longer agree with what the police are doing, then some then the law has to be tweaked, if you like. Yeah. Spain is different. Um, how can I put it politically? Obviously, it was a fascist dictatorship yeah. until 50 years ago, and that legacy in the form of it's multiple police forces, the Guardia Civil, um, kind of state, the state of emergency type culture um, that has existed here throughout the lockdown, yeah. which led to a much more severe lockdown. You know, kids not being allowed out of their apartments for six weeks plus. Yeah. I don't think we think we had it bad in the UK. We kind of agreed with it. We did it, and the vast majority of people uh, paid attention until. Um, a few sort of key moments happened, but but in uh, in Spain there really wasn't any choice as far as I'm aware. I've got numerous friends who live here and yeah. an equal amount of friends who live in Mallorca. All of whom were saying there were kind of police on every street corner. Oh, it was absolutely. really like a yeah, police yeah. state. And, I, and I, I live in London. I the other thing I do apart from my um, my DJ career is I've got a specialist more law music practice. Yeah. So I'm a kind of lawyer come DJ. Um, sounds a bit weird but that's what I do and, yeah, I, yeah, I, know and I continued going to my office right throughout it because um, 
bit legal services and essential service. I was in my office on my own. I drive to the office. I've got yeah. my own office. So it was a pretty safe thing to do. So I got got to see the streets of London every day. And at the beginning of lockdown, they were absolutely deserted. It was like a ghost town. And as people realised. Um, what they could and couldn't do over the course of time the, the traffic numbers got greater but at no point did one ever see that many police you really didn't yeah, yeah, yeah. it was and police weren't stopping people yeah maybe in small kind of I don't know North Yorkshire or kind of small regions where the police where there's a disproportionate amount of police to yeah citizens but in London it just there just wasn't the stop that, yeah. that, that's been going on here so I um, it, it's, it sounds really harsh. What yeah, going well, on? going back to what you were just saying, like about the lockdown here, it was, it was intense. Like you couldn't even like go to the super. You could go to the supermarket, but nine times out of ten you were stopped and asked what was in the bag, and I was like water and milk, and they were like, well, that's not essential, and I'm like, try to live without it. So it was intense, and nobody went out, and it, it did work in essentially. But like you said, it is a quite a strong dictatorship in the sense where no one's going to step out of line here. Um, Moving on from that, like I want to make really touch on like the older days in Ibiza. Um, I want to know your first sort of memory of how this whole Ibiza thing. Like, when was the first time you heard of Ibiza? Well, I think if you're into dance music, you've heard yeah. of from uh, Ibiza's kind of legendary. Whether or not you've been to it, I, I, I was lucky enough to come here the very first time I actually DJ, which is 1988 at Pasha. Wow. And I sort of remember some of it, but I mean, those that remember everything about their first visit to Ibiza clearly yeah. are, are less likely to come back than those that couldn't remember the yeah, first yeah, visit. Yeah, yeah. Bit of a weird par that, bit of a paradox, but it's true, really, really true. Uh, played, at, played at Pasha, Pasha was a very different venue then. Yeah. Um, it wasn't in the era when all the clubs uh, were open air. They, they, they had roofs, but they kind of went on till whenever. Yeah. Um, there was another club called Angel, which uh, was in Ibiza town. We went to. That we was sort of, formerly uh, Boom, wasn't it? Right, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, we yeah. we sort of, um, I think we did my gig, went there, stayed up for sort of a day and a half and, and went home. And at the time, Amazing. of course, you couldn't, it wasn't very easy to fly direct then. There were, there were only charter flights which were orientated around people who wanted to come for a, for a whole week or a fortnight. If you wanted to come for a short trip, you kind of had to do it via Madrid or Barcelona. Yeah. So it wasn't really orientated around the kind of weekend breaks. I mean, where does one start in terms of the differences yeah. between then to now? I mean, like my first memories of you was Obviously the BBC Radio 1 show, I used to have the cassette tape and I used to hit the double button to record it and stuff. And then when I moved to Ibiza, I came here in 2008. 2010 was my first summer and obviously the busiest night on the island was Judgment Sunday. I remember yourself, Vicky Devine, Eddie Hallowell and when you would go to Eden, like it was one in one out or like up to that and just like it was so incredible, the vibe around San Antonio those days. and. I feel like that's sort of starting to come back now towards San Antonio. Would you agree with that? I think so. I mean, I like what what Eden's done as a venue. Yeah. Um, I like what Ocean Beach, Stroke O Beach, have, yeah. have done. I think you can't deny the kind of the daytime pool party culture. It's a little bit different from what I do. I'm yeah. more of a kind of nighttime DJ. But I think the two. Um, I think what is on offer for people in San Antonio, the quality of the hotels has yeah, improved across the board. Important. You know, there's been investment, and I, and I think it's really important that. Um, tour, tourist, you know, tourism and tourist destinations are products like a can of baked, like you yeah, know, yeah. HP competes with Heinz baked beans. It's it's no different. If you if people aren't prepared to reinvest and and cre and provide something that's that's good and competes with the the next destination, then people will take their money elsewhere. And I think nowhere more than kind of now, really, um, yeah. because next year is going to be a very interesting year. One would like to think that this will all be a memory, uh, so. and 2021 will be uh, a fresh start. And uh, of course, it will be very damaging to holiday destinations around the world. But those that kind of really invest and create the best possible experience uh, are those that will prosper. And I do think that San Antonio has done that. Um, yeah. Of course, there are there are certain negatives about that one could throw at San Antonio in terms of historically the, the local authority, the local government have yeah. had this kind of ambivalence about the youth market. Uh, Why where, is that? Where they, they um, the 
Well, Spain's very interesting as a country. It's got more devolved government, government by far than in the UK, for example. You've yeah. got kind of national government, you've got regional government, you've got local government. It kind of goes down and down and down and down. So you start with the national government here, then you've got the Balearic government who are out of yeah. Palma, then you've got the Ibiza government who are based in Ibiza town, and then you've got the local councils, uh, in, the, in the, the case we're talking about San Antonio. Yeah. And um, certainly on a, on a regional level they've got a real problem with what they call tourism of excess that's their expression it translates almost directly into Spanish okay. but I don't actually think anybody quite knows what that means and, and, and it's also a careful what you wish for scenario because uh, young people spend more money yeah. their, their tourist season is longer um, and they and they're less price sensitive about things they yeah, want yeah. as well sure so so I also think that you don't need to, I mean the stats are out there, this isn't my speculation, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that young people uh, compared to 10 years ago, or let's call it a generation ago, let's call it 10 years ago, yeah. however we choose to describe it, per capita take significantly less drugs than they did 10 years ago, per capita drink significantly less than they did 10 years ago. Uh, that's that's out there, I mean you yeah, look, yeah. Google it if you don't believe what I'm saying, that, and we're talking about UK youth. Yeah. Um, so. This kind of image of um, the West End of San Antonio, for example, as being somewhere where everybody's really drunk, urinating all over the place, and kind of are the sort of tourists that you don't want, are uh, is it just doesn't tally with the truth. Um, yeah, I agree. But also, m even you know, even assuming that some of that does happen. Why, why do people come back here in their 30s, 40s and 50s, rent villas, the wealthy buy villas, yeah. the really wealthy come in private jets? It's because they had those first experiences when they were yeah. young. And, and it's really foolish to put people off when, they, when they're young. I mean, Yeah, I agree with that. Um, That's sort of the gateway into how you find all these places in Ibiza. Like, absolutely. If, if it wasn't for San Antonio, I wouldn't be sitting here with you right now. And many people that come, they'll I rarely ever met somebody that comes to Ibiza and doesn't come back a second time. Think, it's true because it's unique. I mean, why is it unique? What, um, what makes well, there's, it? A, there's a combination really. The, the the clubs are clearly a big pull. Yeah. Um, I think the size of the island makes it very manageable. Um, a lot of people have kind of touted Croatia as the sort of, if you like, the replacement for Ibiza. And this year, as far as I'm aware, quite a lot of um, events are still ta are actually happening in Croatia yeah. when everything above a very limited capacity has been cancelled yeah. here. Um, but the difference with Croatia is, and Croatia is still reasonably priced, which unfortunately Ibiza isn't, but it's all very disparate. Uh, it's not all in one place. So I think the size of Ibiza is a really yeah. important thing. I mean, thing. that's what I like about Ibiza. Yeah. You can, you know, there is really nowhere in Ibiza that you're 20 minutes away from anywhere. I know when I jump my motorbike, I can be anywhere within 20 minutes. So it is, it's a unique selling point, you could say. Um, and there's right. a club. You, you've got a club and bar culture. You've, yeah. uh, you've got really good restaurants. You've got a beautiful oh, old best town. Best in the world. I mean, I, I sometimes question people who say, "Well, go." It's such a beautiful island. Go and visit the countryside because actually, if you want beautiful countryside, go to Mallorca. Yeah, Mallorca's yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot more scenic. But what Mallorca doesn't have is this kind of. Um, it just has really cool people as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, well, this is a perfect example. Like the doors that have been opened, I had no intentions really to like be sat in here with you today. Like it just it just happened. Like I, I obviously I would have when I seen you were here. I was like. I'll send them a message and see what it is and thank you again for coming down. Oh, my pleasure. That wouldn't happen anywhere else in the world. You know, like I'm sitting here with Dud's Jules and yeah, no mistake about it, you were one of my idols coming in. Probably one of the reasons I came to Ibiza. Um, and I used to sell tickets on the West End and selling for um, Judgment Sunday was mo one of my main sources of income alongside the sure. <laughs> uh, cream. Um, so like it is, it's just a, it is a unique place. And when you, when you arrive, on the island there's just something different. I don't know what it is when you get off that plane. I've been everywhere, I've been all over the world. I've been in New York, Amsterdam, Berlin, all these party capitals, but it's just, I don't know what it is. Something when you get, that air hits you, when you get through the airport, it's just, it's just a unique feeling. Um, I think we've probably covered enough. 
because you're a busy man, but I really appreciate you taking the My time. My great pleasure. Uh, thanks again, and I'm sure we'll uh, catch up. And, uh, and we've got to say that, you know, fingers crossed, the venues do get to open yeah, next sure. year. I mean, I think that I find it, it's very disappointing that the Balearic government have said, put it, put this kind of blanket Calls from ban. Palma as well. Like yeah, it's... it's I, I think it's short-sighted. I think I understand everybody's very worried about coronavirus. Yeah. Um, I I sense that younger people are a bit less worried, uh, but maybe that's the paradox. Maybe that's why it's because younger people are less worried because actually the mortality very much young people is negligible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That they're worried that younger people don't are not taking it seriously. It might be a spreader or all the rest of it, but. But there's got to be a middle ground. There's got to be a socially distanced way of doing clubbing rather than simply saying no. Yeah, a bit more like clarity because nobody really knows what's going on. I'm getting so many messages through YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and you simply can't reply. And then you read this article and that article and there's, there's just nothing official. And if it's official, it's within like a day and changes are happening so fast. So hopefully we can salvage some form of summer. Yeah. Um, I, can, I can see already this week it's, it's got so busy and that's been quite positive but not to the standards that we need it yeah. but uh, thanks again for taking the time to come down thanks. here um, I really appreciate it yeah, and no worries. I'm sure we'll have a, a drink over the summer yeah. but thanks again cheers perfect nice how long was that? <laughs>